Um, so let's start with uh, P104, mechanics, fluid, and thermodynamics. Uh, and here we'll find the material. Um, so as I said, uh, or we, we, we said in the introduction, uh, the textbook is uh, Physics for Scientists and Engineers, sixth edition by Survey. Uh, we have the list of recommended problems and the solution for all exercises, you'll find them in the uh, Teams files directory as, as long as we go through the, uh, the course. And the solution, they will, up, they will be uploaded for each chapter successfully. So the syllabus, we have already seen it in the previous, uh, in the previous document. Let's start with the mechanics. What is uh, mechanics? So classical mechanics is actually one of six main areas of study in uh, physics. And it's composed of the first branch, which is kinematics, where we study the motion of an object without taking care of its interaction with its environment that might affect or modify its motion. So in this branch, which is the kinematics, the goal is to provide a mathematical description of the motion of the object using mathematical tools, such as the, uh, you know, the kinematic variables that you know, like the position, the velocity, and the acceleration. So this is the main mission in uh, kinematics. You only look at the object while it is moving. We want, to, uh, we want to derive its velocity, its acceleration. We want to answer the question where this object will be located at a given time, etc. But we don't take care of its interaction uh, with its environment. While in the second branch, which is called dynamics, here we will uh, take into account the environment in which the object is. So in other words, we will uh, study how does the motion of an object change because of, because of its interaction with its environment. Like for example, if you have a gravity force, if you have uh, whatever kind of forces, we will study these types of forces and how these forces will uh, change the motion of the object. And from here, so therefore, we will introduce the Newton's three laws of motion and we'll study their consequences. Of course, at the beginning, we will start with uh, kinematics and then we will move on to dynamics. So let's start with chapter two. And chapter two will study the motion in one dimension only. So in one dimension, things are more simpler. And then in the in next chapter, we will generalize the equations that we will derive in this chapter uh, because they are much easier to derive them here. The outline of this chapter is uh, the following. So we will start by defining the basic variables that we will need to describe the motion of an object in, uh, in, uh, in kinematics uh, topic. And the most important uh, variables in this case, they are the position, the velocity and the acceleration. So we will go through each uh, independently and uh, more in, de in details. Uh, then we will study the analysis model and the kinematic equation. So here we will actually discuss two cases. The first case is the case of a particle under constant velocity. And the second case is a particle under constant acceleration. Um, so in each case, we will see what are the equations that describe the motion, and we will derive these uh, kinematic equations. Uh, and finally, we will take one a very famous application to the case of uh, one dimensional motion, which is free falling uh, objects or free falling bodies. So let's uh, start. The kinematics actually, as we said, it describes the motion of an object while ignoring, completely ignoring the external agents that might have caused or modified the motion. So we'll study the motion here in one dimension, uh, which means that the object is moving along a straight line and this straight line can have any direction in the, uh, in the space in the sense that it could be vertical. Like for example, a, a falling object, in this case, the motion is along one dimension, which is the Y axis. Uh, it could be also horizontal, uh, like a ball, it's rolling on, an, on a table or, for example, sliding a book on, 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 on a horizontal surface. So in this case, the motion is also in one dimension, but along the X axis. And finally, uh, it could also be inclined. So it could be along an axis that's neither X, neither Y, nor Y, but it's an axis between both of them. So 
all these cases, they still remain an, uh, a one-dimensional motion. So in other words, the object is moving on a straight line, as we have said, we have said here. So uh, just also very briefly, so the motion, uh, it represents a continual change in an object, object's location. It means that the object, well, when we say an object is moving, we mean that the location of the object is in the space is completely changing. And it could be categorized into three types. So the first one is translational, which we will discuss uh, in details in this chapter and in the following. Uh, like for example, a car traveling on a highway or um, an object, uh, sliding an object on a horizontal surface, etc. Uh, it could be also rotational. Uh, as an example, the Earth's spin on its axis. Uh, and this topic is also covered in this uh, course. Uh, and the last category of motion is vibrational. Like for example, the back, the back and forth movement of a pendulum. So this type of, of, of uh, motion will not be covered in this course. Uh, let's also talk about what we mean by the particle model, because this we will uh, use it um, in all chapters. In each chapter, we will specify what model we will consider. So a moving, a moving object is described as particle, regardless of its form and size. This is what we mean by a particle model. So let's first start by defining what is the particle and what is the system of particles to be able to uh, distinguish between these two concepts. So a particle is an object that is small enough to be considered of no dimensions with respect to the scale of our observ observation. So in other words, if we, we are making an observation on a given scale where the dimension of the object is, uh, is too small, then we consider this object is uh, dimensionless, which means that it's point-like object. It has no dimension or infinitesimal uh, size, but of course it has a mass. So we will take care of the mass of the particle. A system of particle instead is actually an object that is a collection of an infinite number of particles. And in this case, that means that this object has a given uh, shape, a very well-defined shape and specific dimensions. Um, so actually in, in, in this chapter and a little bit later on, we will use the particle model in the sense that we will assume that the objects which are moving and we were going to study uh, they are point-like uh, objects, they are dimensionless, so we can consider them as particles, even, even if they have a given form and a, a given size. Like, for example, a car traveling on a highway, we will consider a car that it is a particle, so we'll ignore that it has a dimensions, and we will ignore that it has a very well-defined shape, and we will consider that it's just a particle that has a mass. That's it. Um, so this is what we mean by the particle model. Now let's start with the uh, variable of interest and that we will need to describe the motion of the objects and to define the kinematic equations. The first and the most essential uh, variable is the position. So the position is of a given object is defined by its location with respect to a chosen reference point. And we consider the reference point always to be the origin of a coordinate system. Like for example, consider, you ha consider this translational motion of this car. So this car is moving on, uh, on, the, on a highway, for example. So we modelize the, the highway, we take it as the x-axis. So this is our x-axis. And let's suppose that the car is moving between two positions. So it was at position A and it goes to position B. Uh, in this case, the, the position is defined as the location of the, of the object, in this case the car, with respect to a given point. So we will take this to be the x-axis, as you see here in black. We take the uh, origin of the coordinate system, so the origin of the x-axis to be our reference point, and then we measure the position as the distance between the reference point and the location of the object. So when the car is at point A, we will uh, see that the vector position of the particle 
which is the car, it's uh, defined by this xi to say that it was at this initial position. And when it is at point B, then it, the, the position is nothing else than the distance between the reference point O and the location of the particle at point B. And keep in mind that it's not only about the distance. So the vector position, it, it, it uh, defines the distance. So where the particle is located with respect to the uh, reference point, but also it defines uh, the direction where the particle uh, is with respect to the origin. This is why the position is a vector. And as you can see here, xi, it's a vector that has a magnitude, which is the distance between the particle and the point of origin, so O, and also it has a direction. Uh, so this is it for the position. Now, what do we mean by the displacement? Displacement is also a very important variable that we will see it will, uh, it will be used uh, to define the uh, velocity. So the displacement is defined as the change in the particle's position during some time interval. So if the particle is moving like we have seen in the previous slide between points A and B, then between these two points, we can define a displacement uh, which is the change in the position. It's represented by delta x. And as the particle moves from some initial position xi to a final position x, xf, so its displacement is defined by delta x equals x final minus x initial. Uh, and keep in mind that, uh, of course, uh, the unit of the, uh, of the position is a meter. Therefore, the unit of a displacement is also uh, meters. Now, the point is that delta x is a vector quantity. Since xi and xf, they are vectors, so the position is a vector, and delta x is a difference between two positions, then delta x is also a vector. So that means that it has a magnitude and it has as well a direction. It means that delta x shows us in which direction the object is moving, in which direction the position uh, vector is changing. Uh, delta x is equal to zero if the motion ends at some point uh, that is the same where it starts. So consider that the particle, it starts moving from point A, it makes some uh, trajectory and then gets back to the point A. In this case, we'll see that x initial is equal to x A and x final is equal to x A. That means x initial is equal to x final. And if you replace x final equals x initial in this expression, you'll find that delta x is equal to zero. Uh, also, delta x could be positive or negative. That depends in which direction the particle is moving. So if it's moving along the x-axis in the positive direction, you will end up with a different result when it is moving in the opposite direction. So this is it for the displacement. Now we will define uh, the distance, which is also a very important variable that we have always to distinguish between it between uh, displacement and uh, the distance. So the distance is defined as the length of a path followed by a particle in motion. If you have a particle that is moving, so let's say for example here you have a particle moving between A and B again, but it could move through um, different paths. You have here different paths. Uh, you have the solid red curve, you have the dash, the dotted. You have many uh, possibilities for the uh, path uh, to follow to be followed by the particle when moving from A to B. And each of these um, paths, you will have a different length. It's a different distance, which will be, uh, if the particle will take this solid line between A and B, it will be actually traveling through a given distance D1, which is different than if it uh, follows this path, which is the dashed line. So you have to keep in mind that to the distance, we, uh, we write it as D simply. Distance is always positive. It's a scalar quantity, which means that it's a number. And it does not have a direction because it measures a length of a path. So it does not measure the difference in the position as it is the case for the displacement. This is why it's just a scalar quantity. It's not a vector. And of course, it's measured in meters um, in the uh, SI units. So what is the difference between the displacement and the distance? Uh, at first instance, so the displacement is a vector, while the distance is a scalar. Uh, the displacement can be positive or negative, while the distance is always positive. So the distance is like time. It, it, it increases, but it does not decrease. 
the displacement is equal to zero if the, uh, the final position is equal to the initial position. So even though uh, the particle has done some uh, trajectory and moved, uh, if its x initial is equal to x final, then its displacement is simply zero. However, this is not the case for a distance. If the particles move, if the particle moves along any path, and even if it goes from point A and gets gets back to point A after some time, the distance is different than zero because because it is the length of the uh, path followed by the particle. So, whenever the particle is moving, the distance cannot be zero, but but the displacement it can be zero if x initial is equal to x final, and in the general case the distance is not necessarily equal to the uh, magnitude of the displacement vector. So in other words, let's have a look at, at this uh, figure in here. So you have different possibilities for the particles to follow, for the particle to follow. If the particle goes from A to B through, um, for example, the straight line along the X axis, then in this case, the distance traveled by the particle would be exactly equal to the length of the uh, displacement vector. However, let's consider the two cases. The particle moves along the straight line from A to B, and the particle moves along the straight curve from A to B. So in this case, you can clearly see that the distance uh, between the two paths, whether a straight line or on this solid red curve, they will be different. So this shows that the distance is not always equal to the displacement uh, vector magnitude. And here, here you can see clearly the case when you, when you take the two cases, any of these uh, red curves, or the case when the particle goes from A to B on a straight black line. Um, so here another example to show that uh, the distance is never zero while displacement can be zero. So your example assume that you have a runner that runs on a circular track. So if the runner starts at a given position, uh, which is the start position, and then it finishes the race at the same point, which is the finish uh, point. In this case, actually, the runner, uh, practically, it has uh, run a distance D, which is nothing else than the circumference of the circular track. However, since it starts from the uh, initial position start and then it finishes at the same position, which is the start point. It means that its x final is equal to x initial, and therefore delta x is simply equal to zero. So this is another example for a circular motion where a displacement can be simply equal to zero while distance is not equal to zero. So I'll move now to the velocity, but I'll continue in another uh, record. <laughs> 